Hi, Larry Berman here, and here's what's on my radar this week. Well, we started our uh, weekly Berman's Call webinars up again, and uh, I talked uh, at length, make sure you catch that one, uh, about my thoughts on Russia, Ukraine. Obviously, that, that's still on my mind here, and uh, probably for the next uh, several weeks, it, it'll be on the front burner until we get closer to the Fed meeting. You know, this coming week, the Bank of Canada is going to set the rate hike parade going uh, in all likelihood, a 25 basis point move. And it's widely expected and, and shouldn't be a surprise. They have not given us a lot of detail on how they plan to unwind the balance sheet. So that could be new for the market. And if they're aggressive on that front, we could see uh, a bit of a surprise there, maybe a bit of a rally in the Canadian dollar, especially if, if energy markets um you know maintain their bid we've come off the boil off the speculation over the russian ukraine uh conflict um but th but that's the that's this week really what's the fed going to do we we've heard from a couple fed speakers post uh, uh putin putting on the risk for for the world and um it looks like um you know business as usual. A couple of them said, oh, maybe we, we, we don't uh, be as aggressive and then markets calm down all of a sudden. Yeah, we can be more aggressive. So financial conditions, financial conditions, which are combination of credit spreads and the S&P 500. <laughs> um, and, and that is driving the Fed. Um, it, the Fed put is driving the Fed. So We'll see how that all plays out in the next couple of weeks. But for now, markets bounce and I, and I think you've got to you got to fade the rallies at this point. Um, we were buying the dips. Our pro eyes indicators were very, very oversold, attractive. We covered some hedges. We did a little bit of buying uh, this week um, and we'll look to reestablish those hedges. Um, let's have a closer look at some of the charts. So here, here's our S&P 500 chart of the week. And you can see we had been talking about a retest of the uh, January lows as a likely uh, risk factor as we got up into this bounce, uh, suggesting that it's a bounce that's likely going to fail. We suspect the 50 and the 200 day average. Mathematically, they probably cross sometime by mid-March. And uh, we would look to, as we got close to that in the Fed meeting and the options um, expiry for March, that we look to that point for the next potential sell. So whether that happens in the next couple of days or next couple of weeks, hard to say, but that's kind of what we're targeting here. Meanwhile, big oversold rally. If we look at the downside price action from the last um, couple of days here so we can bring that up on the chart and have a look at that deep oversold condition and what what kind of happened on that reversal so you know this area here where we had this gap we had the initial move up it did a lot of backing and filling in here uh, on an interday basis and then turned higher so so this kind is kind of our first support Turns out right there, right where the market closed before Putin, um, you know, invaded Ukraine was that January low. So we had covered some shorts right, right in that area. We did a little bit of buying throughout the day yesterday, but not a lot. I'm fully expecting in the context of the Fed tightening that we revisit these lows sometimes. So it's really going to depend on the message coming out of the Fed in a couple weeks in terms of how the market plays out for the next few months. For the bull and bear picks of the week, I, I really, really, really like silver as a better way to play the precious metal space, the inflation trade. But the principles of silver here in terms of uh, the use of silver and electrification, I think is going to be a big play for the next couple of decades. We've got a chart pattern here where we saw the breakout we saw the failure, call it consolidation for the last year and a half. And now we've got this pullback to the breakout. We've got a little base setting up here. We're doing some backing and filling and testing. And if we blow this up a little bit, 
I really like this behavior here as a bottom. So I really like silver here. I think there's good potential. We should at least get a rally up to the falling 200 day. You can see the green line there um, as, as the failure pretty consistently uh, once we got below it. So, you know, I'm looking for a breakout later this year. We should be able to get SIL up into the $50 range again and, and sitting at 35. There's not a lot here that looks like it could go for a 50% move. On the bear side, again, be cautious, be hedging. Don't, you know, don't go all in here. There's not a lot to, to get excited about at this point. We are just beginning the Fed tightening cycle. There's, there's six months, 12 months, 18 months of this in front of us. And you've got this war that's broken out. It's caused an inflation problem. There's not going to be any fiscal support here, given that the probability of governments changing or the Congress changing in the U.S. It's just a bad look going into the U.S. election where you do have some support is now coming out of China. And, you know, it'd be another bull pick of the week to grab some Chinese stocks here that are just getting pummeled into this um, weakness caused by Russia and Ukraine. I think there, there's some great bargains there. So maybe two bulls this week and be really cautious on, on chasing too much strength here. Have a great week, everyone.